when you observe the universe, yeah. you know that the universe has been made by someone other than itself. Yeah. This is automatically concluded that if everything is contingent, that has to be. Some companies. Um, you know, it's hard to, to explain it in English, but it's try, try. Your English is good enough. Maybe you can help us when you when he's trying to. If you sort of not have, if you don't have the, the the vocabulary of examples, you can ask him to yeah, translate yeah, back. Know. Yeah. So, if I told you this camera and the tripod is not made. Would you just simply say, yeah, I agree with you? Or would you say, no, it has to be made? Which one? Yeah, it has to be made. Because based, it's here. based on what? Why would you say this is made? Um, Have you seen this I, maker? Uh, no, no. no I, know, I, I get where you're going, uh, going to, but um, you don't have to see... Uh, like always, uh, if it is there, so you don't have to see it. I get that. Good. So, the world is there, just like the tripod, the world is around us. Yeah. The planets, the stars, the yeah, galaxies. Gravity, gravity, yeah. gravity, 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 exactly. Yeah. Then how are we then saying, no one made all this? Just like if I said, no one made this camera and the tripod. If I said, how do you say no one made it? You should say, I'm certain someone made it. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's true. I'm, I'm certain that somebody made all of this. Then you're not an agnostic. No, but I made, I didn't make any effort to like, um, go in the Bible or really make some... You don't need to, you don't need to go in the Bible to, to understand that. When you observe the universe, yeah. you know that the universe has been made by someone other than itself. Yeah. The universe didn't make itself. The universe could not have been made by nothingness. So something or someone would have made it. This is not agnosticism. You are already a theist. You are already a believer yeah. that there was someone higher in power and authority and majesty has made this world, this universe, you just need to know who it is or what it is. Yes. Yeah? So that's the journey of finding out what indeed or who indeed is our creator. This is not agnosticism. This is trying to understand which concept of theism is true. There are many... What, what about the philosophy of composition? You, what is the philosophy of composition? That, um, that a small, uh, that you can include the same thing or the different examples. Yeah. I'm not using the argument of composition. I'm simply no. saying, if something exists now, there cannot be a time in the past where there was absolute nothingness. Because absolute nothingness cannot make anything. Yeah, yeah I yeah? agree. It's, it's, it's the argument from origination, right? Am khuliqu min ghayri shay, am humul khaliqun. Am khalaqu samawati wal ard, bal la yuqinun. This is the Quranic argument origination when things like this we see it could not have originated by itself or by nothingness you need an originator other than itself to explain its origin nothingness no. to give you to, to, to give you an example to give you an example if something exists today like you and I what's your name boy 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 I am Mansur boy what's your name brother Hussein Hussein Hussein, boy, Mansour, and you? Yasin. Yasin. Yasin and Hussein and boy. Yes. You and I, we exist. We have prayer to us from our existence, our parents, and so on and so forth. And we can go back to the earth, our solar system, and so on. We cannot say at point in the past there was simply nothing. And then something popped into existence. Because nothing, nothing is the absence of anything. Absence of matter, space, time, fluctuation, gravity, 
quanta, potential, absence of everything. That's nothingness. It's something that is non-existent. It's a concept that we use to, to uh, use to understand what is something. The opposite of that. Yeah? Yeah? So this nothing, yes. while it is non-existent, it cannot make anything. It doesn't even exist. It doesn't have any energy or power to do anything. It doesn't have the will to do anything. It simply lacks everything. The fact that we exist means something has to be there always and not nothingness. Always something in the history past, however past you go, there has to be always something. If this is the case, then there is a problem called infinite regress of causes. You cannot have something being caused by something which was in turn caused by something ad infinitum. If it doesn't stop somewhere as the first cause, you would not be able to explain this. To give you an example, you see this, right? Um, don't interrupt. You see, if you say, uh, don't interrupt. He's a toxic heckler. <laughs> Toxic. Like See? What did I tell you? To debate Christians. What did I tell you? Very toxic heckler. Insulting. Uh, no. So, this bag was on, on my hand. If I want to give it to your hand, I have to do that action, right? For that action to take place, I just simply give it to you. But what if I said, before I give this bag to you, this book needs to come from him to me. There are infinite number of people between you and me that this has to go through. Make it simple. I have to give it to her and this lady and this gentleman. And this. You are very intelligent and, and very smart uh, individuals like yourselves. We're talking about the problem of infinite regress. I'm giving an illustration in which if there was an infinite cause of our existence of our universe, we would not come at this point today. As an example, I'm saying, even this action of the bag going to him, if there are infinite number of people this bag has to pass through, would this bag ever reach his hand if it, if it goes through an infinite number of people? I'm saying the infinite cause is not rational. It has to be a finite at the end. It has to stop somewhere. It's my ignorance who said it has to be an infinite cause. I'm saying infinite cause is impossible. Okay. That's what I'm, yeah, that's what I'm illustrating. So we all agree. Yeah. So, no, no, if, thank you. So what I'm saying, if there are infinite number of people in front of me, this bag would never reach your hand, would it? If the universe was caused by someone or something that was in turn caused by something, infinite causes will never come to make that action, last action of creating the universe. Because there are infinite number of things or causes to make that cause, which makes that cause, which make that cause, which make the universe. And the fact that things are happening, you automatically conclude that... No, I'm saying the fact that the action took place, yeah, it demonstrates the causes are not infinite. That means it ends somewhere. We say this is the first cause. You've heard of the first cause argument? It's just another way of using it. So there is a first ever cause. Prior to this, there is no other cause necessary. Because it, what we call is the necessary explanation. The necessary reason. The necessary, the existent. The independent, how necessary. I have to translate it in Dutch, by the way. But how can you conceptualize the necessary? It's the last kind of time. The only, it's the only necessary thing. But how can you conceptualize a necessary being? How do you know? It has to be necessary. Everything else is not necessary. And because they're not necessary, look. Because everything. You, you could have been created as a woman, right? You could have been created, you could have been created as a man from yeah, Pakistan but, but or like India I, or yeah. Indonesia or somewhere else, right? You could have been created. But the only thing we... Do, do you understand? Yeah, yeah. You, you are not necessary to be in the way you are. Yeah, yeah, sure. Because of all of these things that we see, we call them contingent. They don't have to be necessarily like that. They could be otherwise. All why, the, the, why does it have to be? Why does uh, 
why does it have to be an upset? Because everything that's an upset, that's why you... No, no, what I'm saying is, everything that you see is not something that necessarily has to be like that. No, no, no. no. So, because everything is not okay, necessary. You automatically conclude this, that if everything is contingent, that has to be... Now you tell me, if everything is contingent, how do you explain the set of all contingent yeah, yeah. things? I agree, I agree. Then it has to rely on something yeah. which is not contingent. So that's why we talk about the independence, the the society, the sovereignty, the self-sufficiency of our creator, who is not dependent on anything. He is the one from which all cause and effect comes to, and he is not someone who is caused. There's no prior explanation necessary for him. He is the necessary cause for everything. That is something that makes sense intellectually and rationally. So when we talk about you know, the reality of things, there are various ways we can be sure that the concept of a necessary existence who is self-sufficient and one makes sense. You cannot have two self-sufficient, independent cause or creators. You cannot have two of them. Do you do you agree or disagree? Yeah, yeah I try to translate because we don't have to really have a word in Dutch that's going uh, to maybe necessary. That's Something. why that's why I always can you conceptualize. Has to be, has to be, has to be. Yeah, yeah of course. So, well, I, to, give you, example, to give you an example of how independent and self-sufficient beings will have conflict of will. They will have a conflict of will. So, if you have a car, do you drive? Do you drive? Yeah. Right. His car has two steering wheels, yes. two gears, gas and everything, accelerator and so on, brakes. Now, is it Hussein? Hussein wants to take the car this way. Boy wants to take the car after having learned how to drive that way. Which way is the car going to go? You have a conflict of will. You have a conflict. Because if both of you are independent drivers, you say, I'm not going to listen to you. I have my full control, full autonomy. Autonomy. I am in control. I will take it this way. You're saying, I'm in control. I have full autonomy. I'm going to take this car this way. You have a problem. The car is not going to go both ways. So when you have a conflict, how do you solve ah, This conflict demonstrates you cannot have two autonomous agents, two independent self-sufficient agents or gods or creators. They will be cre Imagine now, for the sake of argument, can you, just to explain. Next doesn't happen, you can automatically... No, let me, let, me, let me give you an example. One god says, I don't like Hussein. Destroy. Is he able to do that? He's able to do that. He is able to make you disappear from existence because he's all powerful. Because he's in control, he can do that. Imagine there's another God who's also all powerful. He says, I like Hussein. I want him to live. What's going to happen to Hussein? Is he going to be totally annihilated, destroyed from existence, or is he going to keep on living? Conflict of will. Possibility is not going to happen. Either. Either you are totally destroyed, but that means the one God who is supposedly all-powerful is not God anymore because he failed to keep you living. Do you follow this argument? Yeah, I follow my view that... What was your question? Yeah, I agree, I agree. My question was, just because you don't, don't see X, can you automatically do Y? No, we don't deal with this X and Y argument. It's impossible that there are two most powerful things, or like you said, if we agree, guys, because we don't. No, I'm saying you observe the universe, and the universe itself demonstrates to you that there is no two self-sufficient, independent, absolute creators in action. Had there been two, the world would have been in chaos and corruption and ruin. One God would say, as I give an example, I don't like Hussein. I want to destroy him. He's able to do that. But another God says, I like him. It's up to him, right? He wants to make you living. What's going to happen to you? We have possibilities. Either you're destroyed or you are continuing to live. 
Either way, there can only be one of those creators whose power has been in action. And the other one failed. The one who kept you alive means the one who wanted you to die is not all powerful, not absolute, not self sufficient, not independent, not absolute. You cannot have two absolute beings. This is just an example to illustrate that means, boy, the belief system in which people talk about multiple gods and multiple deities, polytheism, we can disregard it because that cannot be true. Because polytheism is irrational. Polyth believing many gods is irrational. Multiple gods is irrational. Everything you say after a sentence just happens. If you're in the same Did you understand? Good. So the belief that now we want to look as a theist, a believer in a creator, there has to be a concept around in which it tells you there is a one absolute creator. One God, one absolute independent self-sufficient. Someone who is totally unique and different from all the other creation because creation by definition is limited and finite and dependent and so on. Has to be totally different. And guess what? You, we have some religion which claims that. And this is Islam. Islam says in a summary in chapter 112 of the Quran called Surah Al-Ikhlas say he is Allah the one the self-sufficient master of, of all creatures need he neither eats nor drinks he is independent of self-sufficient he is not begotten he is not someone who begets there is nothing co-equal or comparable unto him. Okay, but if this was in the Bible, then, uh, then, then you have conflict, right? You make that, like, Before we go, we need to understand one thing. We now have a scripture, a book from claiming to be God, which you now know it makes sense. That's what I'm expecting the God to be. Yeah. It tells you God is one and unique and absolute, independent, self-sufficient. He is not born. He doesn't produce children and someone like him anymore. And he's unlike anything no co equals no comparison no likenesses do you follow so far yeah, yeah. right so this is something that we need to take seriously because now we know having accepted that there is a creator and this book seems to be in line with my understanding my heart and my mind is in line with it so this has given me enough reason to look further into this belief system Bible you said what does the Bible say about God Let's scrutinize, like you'd scrutinize what the Quran says about God. Yeah. Let me give you an example from the Bible. What is our precise prayer? I didn't uh, see from yeah, yeah. Oh, so, so if you the Quran, uh, it says uh, oh, you, is the, the you, absolute. you say it in Dutch and then you yeah, translate back. Is it the problem? Is it, is it conflating if uh, in uh, sort of like class it says it's one true God and if the Bible says it too, yeah. is it conflating? It's not, it's because it's in line. If, it, if, it's, if it's not in line, if the Bible says something different, if it's in line, it's in line. Yeah, yeah, if line. it's in line, we need to, you need to know exactly what the Bible is saying. We have to independently on its own merit investigate and look into the whole Bible and see what gives the picture. Because to us Muslims, we don't believe the Quran is the first and the last guidance book from God. It's not the first one. No. We believe God has sent prophets and messengers in the past. Some of those prophets and messengers came to the Jewish people who recorded their teachings in this their scripture. They call it Bible or the Tanakh or the Torah, Nabiyim, Kitubim and so on and so forth. But we also know they also distorted, changed, corrupted that message that was given to them. They changed a lot. So that's why you cannot take that information and say, I can accept that because this is something that is changed. You have to now find information from God which is giving you an authentic information 
information unchanged. So you can follow that for your life, for your guidance. An example, I was looking at the sky and I couldn't see a rainbow. But rainbow sometimes appears in the sky. Do you know why rainbows are there according to the Bible? Right. So at one point, God destroyed humankind. This is the biblical account. And then he made a covenant with the people who survived. Noah and his family, some people of his family and his followers. And he says, from now on, I am not going to destroy whole of mankind altogether. Okay? And I make this cover contract with you. I make a covenant. And a sign of this covenant is I'm going to put a rainbow in the clouds. So next time in the future, when I am about to destroy mankind again wholesale, and I look at the clouds, and I see the rainbow, I will remember my covenant. So then he will say, and I'll stop destroying mankind. Now, ask yourself, God needs to be reminded by a rainbow of a contract that he made some point in the past. That doesn't sound like God is self-sufficient in his knowledge and perfect in his knowledge, absolute in his knowledge. It's a deficient God. That's why we have to say this information that's in the Bible is not from God. Because you'd expect God to describe himself to be all knowledgeable. An absolute being is not acquiring knowledge from anyone else because he's independent. So the knowledge that he has is perfect. Self-sufficient, perfect knowledge. So the biblical point here, the Judeo-Christian Bible fails us to accept a God described in the Bible. It doesn't make sense. So this is how you can filter this information and you can say, look, any monotheistic religion that believes in one God, when we examine the religion, their books, their prophets, we can arrive at a conclusion which one is indeed from this God that I know exists as an absolute God. So when we look at the Quran, you will find that you would not be able to disagree with the teachings of the Quran brought by Prophet Muhammad about God, about your purpose of life, about what's going to happen to you. This is all of it will be in sync with you. Your desires may go against you, but your rational mind and faculty will struggle to reject this message. You might say, I'm a vegetarian and the Quran says you can eat meat. You can struggle, but the fact that you have teeth, which are canine, you have enzymes in your stomach to digest proteins, you know that you are made to be something that can eat well, it's animals. Main argument, uh, no, it's not, no, no, what I'm saying is not, I'm saying you are also a proof against you to be a vegetarian by nature. You're not. So your desires may be that I want to not eat any animals because I'm so compassionate and so on and so forth. So the conflict can be there, you and your emotions. You might say, I don't want to go and fight. You could be emotional. But I don't want to go and fight anyone. But the Quran says, look, why would you not fight when they come and they want to totally annihilate you from existence? They come and oppress you and they want to kill you and your family and drive the messenger out. Would you not fight those people? A rational individual say, we need to stand up to this oppression. If you're not able to, well, get someone else who can help you with this being strong, courage, moral courage and so on and so forth. So, my doesn't mean that fighting is wrong. When, say, this country is invaded by your country, do you think the English people will sit there with flowers? Welcome, welcome, welcome. No, of course not. They will resist and fight. Because you're not coming with the intention to bring love and kisses. You might be just destroying all of it because you don't like the English culture, for example. You say, oh, I'm gonna, we're going to destroy all of the English culture and we're going to put our Danish culture in here. English people would they ought to defend Danish. themselves. Not Danish. Where are you from? Netherlands. Netherlands. Dutch. 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 Apologies. Dutch. Apologies. Yeah, Apologies. Yeah. Apologies. Yeah. Right. So you see what the problem is? Yeah. The English people would try, not in the English, even the Scottish and the Irish and so on, they'll try to unite to defend from being annihilated of their life, of their honor, of their dignity, but of the, their culture, wild, and so on and so forth, right? Sorry. But the, the wild war to have the same 
same thing, united together in front of Hitler. And that's it. Yeah. So, so we see that certain times our desires can come into play to conflict with the Quran. But if you look at the Quranic message, the message it gives you about your life and the guidance of your life, right. you would not be able to disagree with an intellectual, rationally. So that's why the Quran says, submit and surrender your will willingly and sincerely to Islam. So you, God wants you to become a Muslim by submission and surrender, not by force or coercion, not by compelling someone, but willingly through knowledge and understanding, accepting it. So that is why we say Islam is the only choice for you boy, the only choice. If you think that you came in and speak corner with your friends and now someone else is trying to make you Muslim, I'm only telling you that is the purpose of our life to be submitting and surrendering to God. We were not created by God in just a mere play. You might be here to have fun. When you die, your friends are not going to help you to stop you from dying. When death comes, that's it. No matter my mother, my father, my friends, my, my community, the tribe, my doctor, when my appointed time comes of death, that's it. No one can stop death. So, if I have a purpose... Yeah. Yeah. This would all um, like from all the religions, mm. it's the Quran. I um, is a cause of a normal vibe that all nations take from uh, normal values. values. Like for the Quran, values come in and so the most for me, like in life. But it's like what you say, like uh, surrender to surrender for. It's, it's for non believer heart. It's Surrendering like, means to say, look, submit. I mean, to submit. Yeah, yeah. So, look, I know this is the truth and I will accept it and apply it to my life. For example, when you go to a university or college or school, you know that you are enrolled and you accept that I am actually going to have to study to get a degree out of it. Yeah. If I don't accept that and I then, then go and go sit my exams, I'm never going to get a certificate. This acknowledgement is important. When you acknowledge that you are a creation of your creator, you need to fulfill the purpose of your creation. Why you created for? Because the creator did not create, did we create those cameras for nothing? There is a reason and a purpose. Our creator created us for a reason, for a purpose. We need to fulfill that purpose. The Quran tells us what the purpose is and how to fulfill it. All we have to do is simply accept it yeah. with choice and apply to our life in that way then we know that we are fulfilling our purpose and when we die and we are resurrected again brought back like again in the hereafter in heaven is where we will go through the justice and mercy of God and his you know his, his grace of God and we will be saved from the punishment so of hellfire uh, what would be a first step step to make because now we're taking a lot of steps, steps, steps. the first and easy step is to acknowledge that the Quran is the scripture from God and Prophet Muhammad is from God as a messenger so you acknowledge and submit that there is no God with your question the step before that let's say the face the first, is in right now. first step is to reject that nothing is worthy of worship. Nothing. No tree, no camera, no human being, no girlfriend or wife. They're not worthy of worship. Only God is worthy of worship. Who is one and only. Yeah? First step. That God is self-sufficient, independent, absolute. And then accepting that the way to worship this God is by accepting Prophet Muhammad as his messenger who told us how to worship. That's the next step. By accepting him, as a guide, as a prophet who tells us how to conduct our life, how to operate our life, how indeed to worship our God that we said nothing is worthy of worship except God. The messenger tells us exactly how to. Because if I told you like, okay, I believe in God, but I'm going to worship in my way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to eat just chocolate every day. Five chocolates in the morning, five in the afternoon and five at night. And that's my worship. And that's my worship. Do you think that is acceptable to God? No. He's, he's, he's eating chocolate three times a day. No. <laughs>
Subhanallah. Do you see my argument? We cannot make, we cannot make what is the purpose of our life ourselves. Sorry? God has to tell us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, like, I have a question about, uh, so every, uh, the purpose for everybody is the same for the Quran? Or everyone, everyone has the one purpose, to worship none but God. Okay. Yeah. From the worship point, it is the same. But from the life point, oh, I am mother, I have this duty to do. Duty is different. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, but from inside, yes, it's the same. Correct. Lots of different roles and responsibilities and duties. So throughout life, you just worship uh, Allah? Yeah, and That's worship is not something that, to give you an example, am I speaking to you and inviting you to Islam? That is considered to be worship. When I smile at my brother, how are you my brother? That's worship. Removing a thorn, something that will hurt me when I'm walking, is worship. Yeah, anything that is in line with God and his messenger, of course, as a text name, and God is accept, accept that I'm happy with, it's worship. So our whole life, with we live our life according to how we should live our life, that is our worship. So what I'm asking, look, if you accept that there is no one worthy of worship, you already accept the first part of becoming a Muslim, that only God is worship. What is it, uh, because you know, it doesn't matter how many intellectual arguments you give, sometimes it's emotional. Yeah. Mm, right? Correct. So if you give 2,000 more arguments, people might say, what would be a first step to open your spiritual heart and, let's say, relieve the cognitive dis dis dissonance of people? So, for, you can give arguments so for Boy, for example, he is already sincere. He's already sincere. And Boy already accepts and acknowledges there is a creator alone worthy of worship because there cannot be two gods. I don't know. Did you ask? Yeah. Yeah. So he's already accepted the first part of becoming a Muslim. In his heart, he believes there is no God except God to be worshipped. The second part is his next step is to accept Prophet Muhammad as the messenger. So you have to now confirm, can this man, Prophet Muhammad can he be Prophet of God or not? So you look at what he has brought, his life and his teaching, and then say, this demonstrates to me that he has to be a Prophet of God. If you look at his life, he is known to be truthful, trustworthy, a sadiq al amin someone who is truthful and trustworthy all his life. So he had no reason. This can be soon a heckler talking about Mansur. Mansur. I have downloaded. I've got the money. What did I tell you? You have. Second bullseye, right? Right. So ignore the hecklers because they try always to interrupt our conversation. Always. So the next step is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. His life. If we look at his life, we see for forty years of his life. Forty years. Can you come on this side? Thank you. Right. For forty of his life, years of his life, he was known to be someone so truthful and trustworthy. He never lied. He was always people, even the people of his and the community. Uh, I read the first part in the Quran. It stands in there. Second, the first part in the Quran it gives like how it starts. That, that part I, I read. So the Quran, okay, the Quran. Let's talk about the Quran. The Quran. Can you come on the side? Thank you. Can you make a wall in front of him? Thank you. Just make a wall in front of him, and then push back a little. Have to make a wall against the sun. Yes. They know that people are hearing about Islam. Yes, yes, they want to prevent it. They want to prevent it. Why? Why don't they speak up themselves on their ladders and have their own conversation to convince whatever they want to make people convince of? Yeah? That's the problem with certain Christians here. Yeah, yeah. They have nothing to convince their own religion. Knowing that, they want to interrupt other people from accepting Islam. Unfortunately, that's the reality. In the Quran, the Quran offers certain falsification tests. One of them is how to make it false. Do you, 
zullen we nu gewoon feiten waren, maar dat is het niet. Nee, ik zeg maar dat er wordt een uitdaging gebruikt, omdat er uit te Snap je? Want als je dat bewijst, dan is het gewoon een gelijk. Dan moet je kerst worden gegeven uit God. You can also falsify or accept him by applying a test. For example, Hussein says, I'm the king of India. Can we disprove it? We can. We can. By using certain tests. So you're testing him. So you can test whether he's a prophet of God or not. You can test whether Prophet Muhammad was a prophet of God or not. You can test and disprove or prove it to be the case. Likewise, you can prove the Quran is from God or disprove it's not from God. Yeah? So we know the Quran makes certain tests that you can apply to it. And if it fails on that test, then you would say it cannot be from God. To give you some of those examples, one of the examples, Quran says this is such a book that no one can make even a single chapter like it. Chapter like it. No one can make a surah like it. A chapter. There are 112 surah or chapters in the Quran. The one I showed you earlier was one surah with three ayat, but three lines. No one can make something like it in a linguistic stylistics in the language of Arabic. Because the composition is such that it is impossible to imitate its style. Every other human creation, like if you write poetry or music, someone else can imitate it. But the Quran is such that it is demonstrated objectively that you cannot imitate it. The Arabs at that time were the best poets at their time. They failed. In subsequent times in history, even today, people are failing to imitate anything like this Quran in any chapter, let alone the whole book. They are trying and failing. Why is the question? The Quran says it's from God and you can't imitate it. The Quran also offers another falsification test. It says, look, if this book was any other than God, you would find in it many contradictions and discrepancies, inconsistencies and errors. It says, if a book claims to be from God, you would expect it to make some mistakes of history, some mistakes of the future, which is not yet, and he talks about it. You would expect it to make some mistakes of science. That's what the Quran is saying. If it's not from God, you would surely, certainly find mistakes and errors within it. People are trying. They can't find a mistake, an error, inconsistency or a contradiction in the Quran. If they did, and no Muslims were able to demonstrate otherwise, they have all the right and justification to say the Quran is not from God. Because the Quran makes their own argument. So, so that's the one thing. This is a proof that the Quran offers falsification test. That if this was the case, you should be able to falsify it. In fact, falsify, you can disprove it. Show it. Show it. Exactly. Point. Exactly the point. Because people can claim, anyone can claim, he can come at the book and say, God has written it to me. Give all your money and your phone and your wallet. Anyone can claim. So you have to somehow test it. The way you test it is, what does it say about God? What does it say about this law? Does it make an error? Does it make contradictions and mistakes and so on? When you find that the Quran is free from all of that, you will have to submit intellectually, rationally and say, I accept this book is from God. So this is what we are asking. You've got two friends, Hussein and Yassin, who can help you further if you need to clarify any questions that you have. But so far, if, you've heard, if I told you this is the case, would you even doubt that this Quran is from God? So you should have no reason not to accept it. Your heart should be open to accept and say yes. I am ready
ready to accept Islam. I'm ready to become Muslim. There is no Quran. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway. It's really hard for no believe, but like, most people uh, grow up with Quran, so it's like no Quran. But for people, for person who come from a non-believer family, it's, it's it's weird. It's weird to believe in like an upward person, even knowing um, like Quran is uh, the one and true and only, like with proof and tell without testing. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. But we need to accept the truth when we find it. That's what I'm asking. It's, not a blind man. it's, not a blind man. it's accepting, knowing the truth, and accepting. It. So if you lost your mother, for example, yeah. no, I don't want to bullseye on that one. If you lost your mother, and then you discovered her, and you have proven to her that's your mother, you're not going to wait and say, let me see what she does, how she cooks, and you're going to accept her with open arms, you're my mother. When you recognize the truth, Prophet Muhammad is the prophet and messenger, the Quran is a book from God, you embrace this truth. And then from watch for day. him, people like if him. Masu who is talking about Israel. And then from there, it will be more than my son. From that day. And I will show and you the lie. You will be oh, Masu. Because you are being critically thinking, searching, and concluding oh, with God. conviction. Masu so your faith say. will be firm, behind. solid, and grounded. Grounded. No individual you. like him shouting at the back will shout. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, we will continue right now, but thank you for all the rest. Thing. Take care. Do you have anything in, 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 in his already, language? I already have this one. Okay. Give to somebody else. Yeah. Give yeah. some from today. <laughs> it's alright. So it's a pleasure speaking to you, boy. Yeah, you okay. Um, I wish I, that you continue this search because we don't know when we're going to die. I'm telling you. Don't. Yeah. You and I can die the next minute. What is important for our fulfilling the purpose of life, God says, is a few things we have to do. Not only acknowledge the truth, but also declare it with our tongue. Make a testimony and start manifesting. No, 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 no. Believing the heart, declaration of the tongue, and doing the actions with our limbs. In that case, then we are in the eyes of God, a believer. Until we do that, we like a searcher. God wants us to be a believer and die on the state of a believer. So I want you to really take your time without doing like, oh, let me leave it for another year or when I'm older. Because you don't know when you're going to die. Before death comes to us, which you have no guarantee when, you need to submit and surrender to this God by making that declaration and submitting with your limbs. That is so important. Because even Satan knows, even Satan knows the Creator, but he doesn't submit. That's why he would not have fulfilled his purpose in this life. You and I don't only have to believe in our heart. It is not sufficient. Declaration of the tongue is important. We become a Muslim. People know. And then within the faith community, we start practicing the limbs, demonstrating that I am submitting to God. Imagine you work for a company and you go to your work and you sit there and do nothing. You say, yeah, I know you're my boss. I'm going to sit there. I'm going to play on my phone. No, you have to show the actions yeah. to get the reward at the end of the day. God says you have to believe, declare and do the actions if you really want to be saved from the hellfire. He doesn't want anything more. He says it's so easy and he will guide you constantly. If you take one step to God, God will take you. Take ten steps to guide you. If you come to God one hand span, God will come to you an arm span. If you go to God walking, he will come to you running. A metaphorical way telling you once you're sincere, and you're seeking, God will guide you even more clearly and so on. So I, I encourage you to take that step. If you come back again, I want to see you as a Muslim. Wow. 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 Wow.
we are born as a Muslim, but at some time we have to quit our belief. So our belief is not a blind belief. We ask and search as when we are when we are young and search and found that Islam is the most reliable religion that we can understand and believe. So it's, it's not different. So if you are not born in Islam, it's easier to like. Yeah. Uh, what were you you need to find yeah, you need to yeah exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 in the universe we have that the same moment as well. so Peace, peace. You from your side have to act as an ambassador. Is this from your side? In your life, in your actions. From your side. He sees you acting this in a way that doesn't appeal to him to be a Muslim. He's been fasting for the last five years. I am not doubting, but I'm saying it's important to remember this. Man, it's like the logical thing. It's something else. You'll be on the table. Leave him. Leave him. Leave him. Leave him. Yeah, it seems to be something. Don't do it, Don't do it, Don't do it,